Hello. Right, lithium cells or lithium batteries, especially 18650 style. They're used in just about everything nowadays. Uh, but getting good ones for your own projects can be quite difficult. I mean, I'm concentrating on, on, on that style. I mean, if you're using the little pouch cells, then these seem to be pretty much what they claim to be, the ones I've had so far. Uh, and they're all different sizes. So basically, you're better off buying them new and hope for the best. But these, trying to get good ones, can be expensive. And unfortunately, there's also a lot of fakes about, especially the branded ones. Uh, you know, the uh, some of the ones in bright colored labels. I uh, had a set of those that were supposedly 4.5 amp hours to test, and the best was 900 milliamp hours. Uh, getting good quality ones that can cost several pounds each, or seven do several dollars each. Uh, but there is an alternate source to get pretty good batteries or cells at quite a reasonable price, and that is laptop batteries. And I got these a while ago, I got two of these a while ago to. Uh, to use one of my own projects. These are 7.8 amp hour or 7 to 800 milliamp hour rated. Oh, that's not. Uh, <laughs> can't, can't. Security text quite uh, good. And there should be nine 18650s in them. Uh, they're actually for a, they're a model 1526 for a Dell, these particular ones. You can see what they claim to be. 7.8 milliamp hour and um, there's nine cells so three series three parallel so what i'm going to do with these and i say like, i'm not oh that looks like it's going to want to be it popped as soon as i started gripping and twisting it so that's good so let me get a screwdriver i was expecting to have to break these quite violently but uh I might just open up oh yeah that's opening just with a very light pry it's quite good. Yeah, I think it needs a bit of persuasion. And my normal technique for opening things like this, I did a video on a while ago showing a pot on a power supply, is just tap along the joints and the tend to, and I'm not bothered about the casing, so I'm not bothered about breaking that, but if you keep tapping along the joints, the tend it tends to Get that in there without stabbing myself. It tends to uh, crack the joint, crack the joint adhesive without causing too much of the damage. But you will get noisy, so I'm not going to try and talk over it. I don't know if you can tell, but the, the tone changed as I was tapping it. That was quite solid. I'm hoping if that's worked on that joint. It should now have opened up quite a bit. What's happened to this end? That's quite tight looking still. Yeah, that, that one's going as well. I don't want to stab the batteries so be a little bit careful but if we can get the get to the point where i can get a screwdriver inside the case it's not far off of that it's just been a little bit awkward i mean the other thing is just try to cut in the corners if you don't need to close it up again like something you're trying to repair or to reclose you can just nip the corners off to give access and break the seal Now, there's not a lot of these on these, I think there might actually be screws under the label. It's a possibility, I didn't take the label off. Could actually be some screws under there. Just get the label off. Oops, I'm not actually in my keyboard. Let's check there's no screws. Oh, you can actually see the cells, it's the, the outer casing is so, so thin it's moulded around the cells. I don't know what, what, no, right, look at that. It's now starting to pop open just from squeezing it. So I'm just get that front joint a bit more. I should. So 
that to undo. Yeah, it's a kind of double overlap. It goes both over the outside and over the ins uh, and down it inside that that edge. Oh, there we go. It's going. There we go. Gone. Perfect. Right. So there we have a set of nine eighteen six five O's. Now, anything in packs like this will not have internal protection. They shouldn't. You shouldn't use internal protection cells if they're going to be serious as uh, that prevents them, the other cells from charging. In, they must have a balance system, regardless. And having them internally protected means the first cell to get up to full voltage will uh, disconnect and stop any of them charging further so they can't balance through the balance system. There's a bit of glue in there somewhere. There's a bit of hot melt holding it all in. Just want to try and pry that without or twist it a bit. That's it. So the cells come clear without the having to pry directly on the cells. So it's a bit destructive, but it works. You see these are in banks of three and there's three three of these packs in series. Might as well start separating them, make it a bit easier to handle. And the charge controller is presumably on the back of that. I don't know. Could be enough terminals for it to be external. So let's snip that link there. The other thing is, as long as the welds are good, I did have one. Oh, that, that, well, that strip's broken. It's just torn from flexing it. As long as the welds are good in, in them, then you can leave the ends of these on rather than trying to peel them off. Leave them on, fold them back, and you've got a nice little solder tag that you can connect to wire to easily that doesn't take too much heat. And as long as you only use the, the outer folded area, it's not going to pass too much heat to the, to the rest of the cell and cause any damage. As I've accidentally once, when uh, I had a pack that had very, very poor spot welds. Trying to get it to uh, it well, the, the the doing this type of thing, the all the all the links fell off as soon as I started to flex it at all. Basically, every cell separated from the spot well, the, the joints were abysmal. Uh, so I tried to use some bar soldering directly to the cells, and it was not very effective. I managed to cook one, so what's it got? I managed to to overheat one slightly. Only, only a few seconds of soldering, very fairly quick. I managed to overheat it enough that the uh, it must have damaged the in internal insulation because it started getting hot on its own. So they rapidly take it outside and leave it. Luckily, it didn't actually burst or catch fire or anything, but it, it was it was too hot to touch for about an hour before it started cooling noticeably. So, you now that's, uh, now I think the cell rating must be, now they're according to these, they are 2 amp power, not um, 2.4 amp power. Oh, sorry, 2 point, it should be 2.6, shouldn't it, if it was 7.8? 2.6 amp power, they're only 2 amp power, but even then they're not bad. Um, the typical price of these, at least in the UK, you can get them for about, well, when I got these, uh, I got two of these, and I say when I got, I got these, they, I think they were £12. They've gone up since then, where everything's been going up, but they're still under £15. If you search around on eBay, you can get uh, nine cells, which are, from past experience, these on uh, one batteries that are from sellers, big, major sellers have got guarantees. Uh, they are pretty good con capacity. They might even be above the rated capacity. I don't know if these actually selected or something for the higher claim or not, but uh, um, they do tend to be pretty good on capacity, unlike the uh, uh, brightly coloured things. 
Now, just as a word of caution, when you're building cells, you must have, or building battery packs rather, that have serious cells, you must or have a, a battery protection board that has cell balance on it, such as that. I mean, that's a, that's three series and four in parallel. You can see the cross connections that way. That, so that's a three cell balance rated at 40 amps, supposedly. I'm not actually using it like that. And you can see it's got three channels there, which basically have voltage sensing and just switch a big resistor in across a cell when it gets to a certain voltage to allow the charge current to continue at a low level to equalize the other cells that haven't quite reached voltage yet. Um, for that to function, you can't have protected cells. Also, any paralleling cells, like these obviously pre-paralleled, um, they need to be the same rating, a good match, ideally from the same original maker's batch, if you get a bulk batch like these are. Um, and they need to be in the same state of charge when you connect them up, so to avoid any high currents as, as the charge level equalizes. And uh, treat always treat lithium cells with caution. The energy capability of these, the stored energy in joules, is ludicrous. Um, they are roughly equivalent to a third the weight of TNT in the stored energy. It might not be released quite as rapidly if things go wrong. But the potential harm is just the same. There's people had, uh, you know, being burnt, had uh, cars catch fire because of uh, poor quality equipment that's been uh, dodgy batteries in the put in the car, and people's houses have been burnt down from things catching fire due to mischarged batteries. So do use extreme caution, use proper cell protect, cell level protection and battery level protection. This, these are, boards like this have got both. They both monitor the, the overall battery voltage and the individual cell voltages and protect from under voltage and over voltage. But they are not chargers. These are purely protection. You still need a charger of a correct voltage to match the peak cell voltage, uh, however many times 4.2, with the current limit and unless it's something it's going to be charged briefly and then taken off charge again manually it should also have an automatic cutout that stops once the batteries are fully charged and the current drops adequately to about 10% of the rated capacity so say we're charging these 2 amp hours 2000 milliamp hours so when the current drops below 200 milliamps at full voltage the charge power should be switched off and uh, not switch on again until uh, the voltage starts to drop significantly. Um, I mean, the best analogy I can come up with, it's not a very good one, but the best analogy I can come up with, with, with to how these behave chemically or electrochemically is, uh, daft it sounds, uh, a bubblegum balloon. Overcharge them, uh, slightest bit it starts to weaken them, repetitively overcharge them a slight bit or overcharge them significantly, It'll burst, release um, either the burst and release uh, chemicals that can catch fire, or they just spontaneously catch fire and can explode. If you let them go to low voltage, it's just as dangerous, as it sounds, as um, the well, I say the, the bubble and balloon uh, analogy. The thing starts to collapse and uh, create something stick together. And when you recharge it, it's the other bits are overstretched and burst. It's not quite the same mechanism. It's actually the uh, voltage uh, causes chemical effects which stop the uh, materials crystallizing. When the voltage gets too low, the materials start to crystallize and damage the insulation between the electrodes and start to short out. And at that point, if you try and charge them again, because they've already got shorts, um, they start to overheat and, again... Uh, oh, they get very hot, burst, or just plain catch fire or explode. So handle them with care. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope that's of use. Um, I've hopefully added links in the video, or hopefully will add links to the video, um, just some examples. Um, and thanks for watching.